Hello again, everyone. Now, when it comes to load averages, this is a concept that might actually confuse a lot of newcomers out there. Load averages themselves help us understand how busy our Linux server or workstation happens to be. And it can help you determine whether your Linux instance is keeping up with its workload or if it's falling behind and maybe even possibly overwhelmed. So what I'm going to do is actually explain this concept to make sure that you guys understand it. And by the end of the video, you'll even understand how to read the individual values within the load average as well, which is another thing that sometimes confuses newcomers. But before we get into that, I need to mention the sponsor for today's video, Linode. And Linode is a Linux focused cloud server provider. And with their platform, you can spin up your very own Linux server in minutes. They have all the popular Linux distributions there, such as Ubuntu, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, and many others. So you could choose your favorite distribution and have your very own server based on that distribution running in no time. And you could use that server to do all kinds of different things. You could spin up a blog for yourself, maybe even a Minecraft server, set up your own VPN service, try out WireGuard, install Nextcloud, or you could even use it to spin up Linux servers for going through the lessons within this tutorial series. And by using the URL that you see on the screen right now, you'll let Linode know that you heard about them from Learn Linux TV, which I would really appreciate. That helps this channel. But in return, what you'll receive is $100 in free credit towards your new account. That's good for up to 60 days. And you can fit a whole lot of Linux within that credit. So thank you yet again to Linode for sponsoring this particular video. I really appreciate it. Now, without any further hesitation, let's go ahead and dive into the concept of load averages. So here I'm actually connected to one of my servers running on Linode right now. And this server right here is actually the server that powers the official website for this channel, learnlinux.tv. So what you'll see in this video is the actual load averages from a real server. But what command do you use if you want to find out what your load average actually is? Well, there's actually a handful of different commands that you could use to find that information. One of which is the uptime command. As you can see, the server has been up for 27 days. That's the whole point for the uptime command. That's what it does. It tells you how long your server has been online for. But in addition to that, its main focus, it also gives you the load average. You can see that on the right hand side, it says load average, and it has the numbers 0 0.07, 0 0.05, and 0 0.01. But what do those numbers actually mean? Now, I'll tell you all about that shortly. But for right now, I want to give you a few other methods that you can use to pull the load average. Another way you could grab the load average is running cat against the slash proc directory, and then load average with average abbreviated. And when you press enter, it's going to give you the load average. The load average in this case consists of the first three numbers here. They've actually changed since the last time that I've run the command, and that's okay. The load average changes all the time. But we were able to get the load average by running cat slash proc slash load avg, as you can see. Now, in a previous video in this series, I went over the htop command. The htop command actually shows you how overloaded your server happens to be. But in addition to being a really awesome resource monitoring utility, HTOP also gives you, you guessed it, the load average. You can see that near the top right hand corner of the terminal window. And you can also see that the load average is changing. But it's actually not really under all that much load right now. How do I know that? Well, if I was to ignore the CPU meters, I know that from the load average. And what I'll do is let you guys know how to understand the output and what the values mean when it comes to the load average. So let's exit out of here and let's get into it. So like I mentioned during the intro, the load average actually tells you how busy your server happens to be. Maybe your server is about to fall over because there's just too much load, it can't handle it, or maybe there's not much going on at all. From the load average, you'll be able to understand exactly the state of your server when it comes to how busy it is. Now the uptime command is actually my favorite method for pulling the load average because it's always helpful to understand how long your server has been up for anyway. So it not only gives me that, but it also gives me the load average, which in this case is 0 0.04, 0 0.05, and well, 0, 0.00 respectively. So what do those numbers actually mean? Well, the first number, in this case 0 0.04, represents the load during the past one minute. 
The second number, 0 0.05, represents the load of the server over the past five minutes. Finally, the last number here, which is just zero in this case, represents the last 15 minutes of use or how busy the server has been over the past 15 minutes. So again, the numbers represent one, five, and 15 minutes respectively. And by looking at these three different values, you could understand too if there's a temporary spike or if something is trending in a direction that's really not all that great. Now, one common misconception is that if the load average is a one in any of these time periods, then that means 100% busy. That might be true, but it often isn't. In my case, if any of these numbers reach one, that actually does not mean that the server is 100% busy. But how do you know? Well, the first thing that you'll want to understand is how many CPUs you have on your server. If I pull up HTOP again, which is almost like cheating because it does actually tell you how busy your server is without even looking at the load average, but you're not always going to have HTOP installed. The reason why I brought it up is because as you can see, I have two CPUs. We know that because we have a meter for CPU one, it's the very first row of the output here. And we also have a meter for CPU number two. So we have two CPUs here. That's the first thing that we need to know in order to understand what the load average is and how it actually corresponds to our particular server. But let's see another way that we could find out how many cores or CPUs we actually have. If we go ahead and run cat again slash proc slash CPU info, it's gonna give you probably more information than you even wanted to know about your particular CPU. But we have processor one right here, and we also have processor zero. So the processor count starts at zero, and in my case, it goes up to one. I have two CPUs. Now, it doesn't matter if you have two physical CPUs or two cores. I mean, you could have 10 CPUs that have one core each, and that's still 10. So cores are cores. It really doesn't matter how you split them up or whether they're virtual cores, real cores, one CPU with one core, none of that matters. You just total them all up. In my case, I have two. It doesn't matter if it's a dual core processor or two single core CPUs. I have two CPUs. Now, if I actually bring up the load average again, then how would I correspond how many CPUs I have with how busy the server is during any of these time periods? Well, in my case, like I mentioned, I have two CPUs. So what that means is that if any of these numbers reach two, then that means the server is 100% busy. And the way that works out is that however many cores or CPUs you have is the number that you reach when you are at 100% capacity. And this is going to make more sense as the video continues, but just keep in mind that 100% busy is equal to the number of CPUs that you have. So since I have two CPUs, then if any of these particular values reach two, then the server is at 100% capacity for that particular time period. I guess you could say I'm not really in danger of anything falling over anytime soon. I'm way below two. In fact, I'm not even at one. Now, in my case, this is a web server. So what it's going to do is serve a web page and that's it. So if you request a web page, it's just going to give you the web page and it's going to be busy for however long it takes for the server to provide you with that web page. So in terms of a web server, you really do want the numbers to stay low because if the numbers are usually high, then that means it's having a bit of trouble keeping up or maybe not, but it's having more and more trouble as the numbers go up. So I would say here that this server is running very efficiently. Let's go ahead and see a different example. What I'll do is disconnect from this particular server and I'll connect to another one. So what I'll do is connect to my Thelio, my desktop basically. It's at 1.63 over the past one minute, 1.65 over the past five minutes, and the load is 1.71 over the past 15 minutes. Now, is that a problem? I mean, it might be if my desktop only has one core or one CPU, then that would mean that it's overutilized. So if it's the case that this particular desktop has two cores or two CPUs, then that would mean that it's underutilized. It's not at 100% capacity. It's actually beneath that. Because again, in that case, 100% utilized would be equal to two. So how many CPUs then does this desktop have? What constitutes 100% usage when it comes to this particular device? Let's find out. I'll run cat and let's check the CPU info, find out how many CPUs we have here. And let's scroll up just a little bit. 
So we have 48 CPUs. Again, it starts at zero. So actually the load average has to hit 48 in any of those time periods to reach 100% utilized. So this desktop is very much underutilized right now. And that makes sense. I'm recording this video. I'm not even using this desktop. So the load average that you saw from the output earlier was just from the, well, background processes that are running or maybe my browser running in the background or something like that. I'm not actively using my desktop at this time, so it's really not all that busy. And we know that because there's 48 CPUs, and as you can see here, it's not even close to 100% utilized. But which of these numbers should you actually pay the most attention to? One minute, five minutes, or 15 minutes? Well, for the most part, I recommend skipping the first number. That's just the usage over the past one minute. And having a job or a task kick off that just uses a ton of CPU for a minute, that's really not all that unusual. Now, as we start to get to the second number, the five minute field, now that's where we can start to understand what's going on here because if that number is really high, then that means that the server has been backed up for five minutes. I mean, imagine if that was 100. That would actually be over 100% utilized in my case, way over that. So that would be a bit of a concern. So in this case, if I had two CPUs, I would be approaching 100% usage. But again, I'm not even close because I have 48 CPUs on this desktop. Now, if you are at all confused, then I think the analogy I'm about to give you will totally seal the deal when it comes to having you completely understand the load average. I'm going to use the supermarket example. The very same example that I used in my book, Mastering Ubuntu Server 4th Edition, to explain this same thing. There's actually a section of that book that's dedicated to understanding load average. So let's say you go to a grocery store and you've selected your items and you approach the checkout area to finalize your purchase. If the store was a Linux server, then in that case, that means you are a task and the clerk, the person that helps you finalize your purchase, is actually a CPU. Each clerk in a typical supermarket can assist one customer at a time. If there was a single clerk in the checkout area, then if just one customer approaches, then that clerk is 100% busy. If a line starts to form, then that means that the clerk is beyond capacity. There's more customers currently than the clerk is able to handle at once. If there were 10 clerks, then that would be the same as having 10 CPUs. In that case, the checkout area would be able to handle up to 10 customers simultaneously. Once the number of customers reaches 11, and then 12, 13, and keeps going up, then that means that the checkout area is actually being overwhelmed. There's more customers there than there's clerks to handle those customers. And just like the hypothetical supermarket example, a Linux server could have a temporary spike in how many tasks need to be run. And sometimes that might be okay. If it's a temporary spike, there's just no problem. In that case, the server or checkout area, if we're still using the analogy, will probably catch up eventually. When it comes to a supermarket, it wouldn't make sense to hire five more full-time clerks just because they're super busy between 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. Busy periods are just not uncommon especially as people get out of work and they start to head home. Maybe they run to the supermarket on their way home. So a temporary spike around that time is probably expected. Now, if the lines are always backing up and the clerks never seem to be able to catch up, then that would probably be grounds for hiring more people or when it comes to a Linux server, adding additional CPUs. Now, is that supermarket analogy a bit cheesy? Well, yeah, it actually is, but it works. And that really fits when it comes to Linux servers and CPUs in general. When your server is at 100% capacity, then the load average for a particular value is going to be equal to the number of cores that you have. And if the number is going above that, then it's time to actually dive in and find out what's going on and maybe take action. You have to kill a process or restart something, who knows? But you'll probably just look at the other videos that I have in this series. And there's videos there that tell you how to look at individual tasks, kill tasks, and things like that. But at least now you should have a basic understanding of what the load average is and how to tell when it's a problem. I certainly hope this video was helpful for you guys. And if it was, please click that like button because that lets YouTube know that you found this video helpful, which might make the algorithm that nobody can seem to figure out possibly suggest this video to other people that might benefit from the knowledge. Anyway, I really appreciate you guys checking out this video. And definitely stay tuned. I have some awesome videos coming and some additional videos coming in this series. So subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you in the next video.